Remember, it's Christmas all the way till January the 5th. So we're continuing to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our focus this morning is going to be on Micah's prophecy about a shepherd being raised up in Bethlehem. So be listening for that shepherding theme and uh, the promises there this morning. A couple of announcements. I'm going to be going out of town uh, after, after service today, and uh, we'll be back later in the week. But uh, just so you know, I'm going to be traveling a bit. The Wednesday service, the regular 5 o'clock Wednesday service, Pastor Stolzenberg will be here to lead that service. They're meeting these days down in Sotorius Hall. So regular 5 o'clock service on Wednesday. Um, next Sunday, we've got a lot of neat things going on. First of all, we're going to be having four baptisms. It's baptism of our Lord Sunday. If you know somebody who recently had a family member baptized here, invite them to come back for that baptismal renewal service that we do on that baptism of our Lord Sunday. Come be part of that. Uh, but after the 11 o'clock service, out here behind the parsonage, we're going to have a little observance for the season of Epiphany. We always seem to miss Epiphany because it usually falls in the middle of the week. But we're going to be remembering the, uh, the light of the of our Lord promised in the Epiphany season. And uh, it will last maybe about 15 minutes. We're going to be doing some singing. Uh, we're going to burn a Christmas tree in the fire pit to release that light. And uh, somebody's making pear tarts. Okay? And so we invite you to be a part of that. There's a bulletin uh, boards there at the back. Please sign up if you're planning to be uh, at that Epiphany observance on the 9th. And then one last thing I want to mention. I've been taking the services and putting them up on YouTube, and the Christmas season services have been very well received by folks watching on YouTube. And that's because of our musicians, the, the singing done by the children, also by our choir and bell choir, soloists, duets, you name it. I'm planning to take all of that and to wrap it up and have kind of an Emmanuel Christmas album uh, to be observable on YouTube. I probably won't release it though till about Thanksgiving of next year, okay? Because I think people are getting, you know, through the Christmas season at this point. But we want to preserve that and share that, the message of Christmas that's brought by our musicians. And I want to remind the members of the congregation if you have an interest in the music, please talk to our choir directors about participating in either bell choir or the vo vocal choir. Uh, and it doesn't have to be a lifetime commitment or, or a never-ending commitment. Uh, if, you, if you would like to sing for a special occasion, please talk with them about sharing that gift that God has given you for sharing the gospel with the congregation. With those announcements made this morning, we will have the ringing of our bell, followed by our opening hymn, God Bless Your Worship This Morning.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Congregation may kneel. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us make confession unto God, imploring his forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. O God, our Heavenly Father, I confess unto thee that I have grievously sinned against thee in many ways not only by outward transgressions, but also by secret thoughts and desires, which I cannot fully understand, but which are all known unto thee. I do earnestly repent, and am heartily sorry for these my offenses, and I beseech thee of thy great goodness to have mercy upon me, and for the sake of our dear Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, to forgive my sins and graciously to help my infirmities. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, hath had mercy upon us, and for the sake of the sufferings, death, and resurrection of his dear Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, forgiveth us all our sins. As a minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you, who do truly repent and believe in him, the entire forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. The congregation may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday after Christmas is taken from the prophet Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, beginning at the 7th verse. And in this reading, we're hearing how the Lord intends to gather his people together like a shepherd gathers his flock and cares for them. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, the pregnant woman, and she who is in labor together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with pleas for mercy I will lead them back. I will make them walk by brooks of water, in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd keeps his flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, and has redeemed him from the hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the heights of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall be like a watered garden, and they shall languish no more. 
Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will feast the soul of the priests with abundance, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, declares the Lord. Here ends the reading. Susie. Our epistle reading for today is from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the first chapter beginning at the third verse. And in this reading, St. Paul is talking about the mystery of God's purpose that has been fulfilled in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fulfillment, for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him also you, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise <laughs> of his glory. Here ends the epistle reading for today. We pray now our gradual responsibly. 
All they from Sheba shall come, they shall bring gold and incense. And they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Alleluia, alleluia. We have seen his star in the east. According to St. John, the first chapter beginning at the tenth verse. In this reading, St. John is telling us how God has come in the flesh, born among us in the person of Jesus Christ. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. And the fullness, and from the, his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. Here ends the gospel for today. We confess the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We sing our sermon hymn. Please be seated.
Please rise. Text for our message today is the Gospel reading for Epiphany. It's Matthew chapter 2. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born the king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. This is the word of God. Please be seated. Well, it wasn't too many minutes ago that we started out our service singing a very popular Christmas hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem. But Bethlehem these days is not so little. The population there has risen to about 28 to 29,000 people settled in that, well, what was a little town of Bethlehem. And the reason is this, Bethlehem is just six miles south of Jerusalem. And people are living in Bethlehem like a bedroom community and commuting in, sort of like people living in Grove City or Groveport and driving up here into Columbus. It's not the little town of Bethlehem anymore. But for most of its history, Bethlehem was indeed that, a little town, a shepherd's town. About a thousand BC, something very special happened in this little town of Bethlehem. The Lord called and sent his prophet Samuel to go down to Bethlehem. His mission was to anoint a new king for Israel. And he was led to the family of Jesse. They were shepherds there living in Bethlehem, taking care of flocks in the hills. And Samuel was to identify which of Jesse's sons would be the next king. And he ended up having to send somebody out to those shepherd's fields in order to find the right man. It was the boy, the shepherd boy, David, and to bring him back and anoint him to be the king. The youngest son of Jesse becomes the second king of Israel and founds a 500-year dynasty. There are 500 years of kings that follow in the train of David from that little town of Bethlehem. From David's time, flash forward about 300 years, and you come to the prophecy that I was reading this morning, part of the Gospel reading. It comes from the prophet Micah. Micah chapter 5, verse 2. And I'll read it directly from Micah for you this morning. But you, O Bethlehem Ephratah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah. From you shall come forth to me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. And that's the source of that hymn title for us, that little town of Bethlehem. Micah describes Bethlehem as, as just a small, quiet shepherd's town. And yet there's a promise here again that a king would arise, raised up by the Lord, to shepherd his people Israel. Bethlehem is little among the clans of Judah, the prophet says. That word for clans there, it's literally the word for 1,000 in the Hebrew language. And that gives us maybe a picture of how small Bethlehem is. They couldn't even muster a 1,000. They were so small in the hundreds, probably, living in that region.
Have you ever been told you're too big for your britches? <laughs> you know this expression, don't you? Too big for your britches. And it's not about how many Christmas cookies you've eaten. Okay, that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about our pride, isn't it? Our pride that puffs us up and raises us up. And Christmas cookies are a problem, but they're not nearly the problem that pride is. And the Lord, I think, teaching us about this and teaching us about humility calls David from that little town, that humble town of Bethlehem, and he also makes it the place where the Lord Jesus Christ would be born there, lowly in a manger. Lowly in a manger, a little town of Bethlehem. God is teaching us in the Christmas message about the dangers of pride, people like Herod, and the blessings of humility in the birth of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. I'll bet a lot of you in your homes right now have one of these things here that we've got laid out on the organ. This is, uh, well, it's the manger scene, isn't it? With all the different characters of the Christmas story gathered there together. And I invite you to do this when you go home today. Have a look at your manger set. And look to see if you can find some of the figures kneeling in your set. Kneeling is a symbol of humility. And often you'll find that there's a figure of a shepherd kneeling in the presence of Jesus, or one of the wise men kneeling in the presence of Jesus. Or maybe even Joseph and Mary kneeling there in the presence of Jesus. A lesson for us to draw from that little town of Bethlehem. In contrast to the great city of Jerusalem is the Lord's teaching us the way of humility in following our Lord Jesus Christ. This is why when we confess our sins as we did earlier and when we pray later in the service, we have our kneelers, don't we? We go to our knees to break that habit of pride in the human heart, in human life, and learn with and from Jesus to walk in the way of humility, the way of our Lord. The story begins with the little town of Bethlehem, but as, as it's described here in Matthew chapter two, the town of Bethlehem is ascending, ascending in people's minds and in people's hearts. It's ascending in the interest of King Herod and his scribes. You remember what happens there in the reading. The, Herod asks, where's the Christ to be born? Where's this new king going to appear? And the scribes know. They know right off. They, they know the prophecy, this 700-year-old prophecy. And they tell Herod he's going to be born in Bethlehem. But they don't say the little town of Bethlehem. They changed, actually, the words. And they say that it's not the least among the tribes of Israel. In other words, it's growing great in their estimation. Bethlehem's ascending. New things are happening in the minds of these scribes because they know it's the place where Christ is to appear. And yet I want you to notice something about these scribes. They know their Bible. They know where the Christ is to appear. And they send the wise men on their way, and yet, knowing this, they do not follow. They don't take that short trip of six miles down to Bethlehem to see the newborn promised king there. The pride 
keeps them in the big city of Jerusalem and away from our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to apply this for a congregation here for a minute. Something for us to think about and pray about as families in the congregation. Often, families know and understand the importance of having children at church, of having children in Sunday school, having them attend their catechism classes. But oftentimes, families will do this. They'll send the kids, and they won't go themselves. And folks, this is a habit that has to be changed in families. If we know the blessings of God are here for us, if we know this is the way of the Lord and that it's good for our children, and it is, everything tells us it is, then we should not just send the children. We should be here present ourselves to hear and partake of the word of God, to humble our hearts, humble our lives, and walk in the way of the Lord our God, as Jesus, born in little Bethlehem, has taught us things to think about and pray about as families practicing the way of the Lord. Micah prophesies the coming of the babe of Bethlehem 700 years before it happens, and he says that that babe of Bethlehem will come with this purpose, to shepherd, to shepherd God's people, Israel. At that time, shepherds did not, they did not have to herd their flocks. They did not have dogs to chase their animals and move them around. In fact, the, the shepherds, would speak to the animals and the sheep would follow them. Jesus talks about this, doesn't he? The sheep know their shepherd's voice and they will follow them. They follow their shepherd. And it just illustrates for us the closeness of that relationship between shepherd and sheep. And that is the relationship, dear friends in Christ, that our Lord Jesus Christ is calling you into. He wants to be your shepherd. He wants to watch over you and care for you and keep you. The Lord knows you even better than a shepherd knows his little lambs. He wants to lead you and your family in that way of life everlasting. We had an example in the news this week of some really bad shepherding <laughs> I want to tell you about. Some of you may, <clears throat> may have read the story. It's about a little girl and her mom. They're in the living room. They're doing some exercises that the gym teacher had given them to do, some challenges, physical challenges for the children to try. And the little girl's all excited. She's really into it. And they get through the challenges given by the gym teacher and the little girl still wants to try something new. And so her mother speaks to the little computer that you can talk to, Alexa. Okay, some of you may have this in your house. You can talk to the computer and it talks back to you. Hey Alexa, and it answers. The mother speaks to Alexa and says, give my daughter a new challenge. And this is what Alexa comes back with. Alexa says, take, take the plug in the outlet, pull it halfway out, and take a penny and touch it to the two prongs in the outlet. I'm not kidding. There's some bad shepherds out there, aren't there? <laughs> and it's a good thing the mom was still in the room when the, the computer told the little girl to do this because she stopped it right away. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> that is so dangerous to do. 
Our lives are full of challenges. Our lives are full of dangers. We need a good shepherd. One that knows us and cares for us. Knows us and cares for us even closer than the love and that care of a parent. And that's who that shepherd is. Born in that little town of Bethlehem, our Lord Jesus Christ. He may challenge us, but he will never lead us astray and trust yourself and your family to the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, in Jesus' day, not even that blessed little town of Bethlehem was staying safe for the Holy Family. The wise men came down and visited, but they were warned in a dream to not go back to Herod, to run off in a new direction, stay away from that big city leader. And the Holy Family is warned in the dream that Herod is going to be sending his soldiers. He's going to be looking to harm the baby Jesus. And so they flee from little Bethlehem and they head down to Egypt. Think about this. A trip of 400 miles. It's about 400 miles to get down there to Egypt. In hours, it's about a hundred or more hours of walking, if you can imagine. Now think about the extent that a parent will go to, to care for its children. The trouble and the toil and the difficulty that we will go through to show love and care to our children. That's the kind of sacrifices that parents will make. Then consider the depth of God's care. How far the Lord our God will go to care for you and to care for me. We started out singing this morning about the little town of Bethlehem. But there's another hymn that tells us about how far the Lord will go to be our Savior to be our shepherd and care for us. It starts out like this. From heaven above to earth I come to bring good news to everyone. It's the message of the angels. Come all the way from heaven to announce the birth of Jesus. Come all the way from eternity to be here for you and for me to shepherd us in our lives, to guide us aright into that way of peace. It's hymn 22, if you want to look it up later. Hymn 22 in our service. There's no greater distance than from heaven to earth. And our Lord traverses all things to be the Lord and shepherd in your life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. <laughs>
your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. And now do we praise thee that thou didst send unto us thine only begotten Son, and that in him, being found in fashion as a man, thou didst reveal the fullness of thy glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it unto them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. to come forward, the congregation may be seated. true body of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for you, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take likewise and drink. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. True body and blood of our Lord, strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. I invite now members of the, of the congregation who are going to be partaking today to come forward and to take a communion kit back to your seat, uh, starting here with Joe and Kathy on the pulpit side.
Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take likewise and drink. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. The true body and blood of our Lord, strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
even thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, grant we beseech thee, that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. <laughs> Shepherd of your people Israel, we come before you this day on behalf of those in need among us and among our families. We ask your mercies upon Andrea and Kirk Amrick, Jack Ashcraft, Sergeant Jimmy Bubari, Robin Kaplinger, Tammy Cherry, Debbie Clemens, Janet Kronkovich, Greg Fleming, Judy Grove, Joan Passon, Brandy Puskas, Gail Smith, Margaret Stevenson, Sherry Weiler, Jim Young, Ed and Diane Arnold, and all those who are facing COVID or other illnesses that we now name in our hearts before you. Grant your healing touch in this hour, O Lord, our Maker and Preserver. We also pray this day, dear Lord, for families who have lost loved ones, that you would comfort them and keep them as a good shepherd watches over the flock and leads them in the way of life. We pray for the family of Shirley Poor, the family of Greg Davis, and the family of Louise Middendorf that they may know your healing in this hour. Look with mercy also, dear Lord, and prosper the, the following families of Emmanuel. Fraser, Fraser, and Fraser, Garner, 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 and Garner, and Garwood. They would be blessed with your care and seek your face all of their days. Almighty and everlasting God, Direct our actions according to thy good pleasure, that in the name of thy beloved Son, we may be made to abound in good works. The same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Be sure to share Christmas cheer with one another and we stay standing for our closing hymn.
company will. I might join a fire too.